Welcome back to the Brown Word. We are uh, continuing on with this uh, look at the uh, the birth of Jesus. And the last couple of months we looked at the purpose of the wise men, the purpose of the shepherds. Well, today I wanted to look at Mary and Joseph. What role do they play? What can we learn from them? Uh, obviously, Mary plays the role of the mother of Jesus. Uh, Joseph plays the role of the father of Jesus, but not the biological father. I believe he plays the role of the adopted father of Jesus. Uh, and then finally, what can we learn from them? Simply put, faith. So uh, now with that, we want to break that down. It's not like, okay, that's it, we're done. <laughs> but uh, I think simply put, it is the faith of both of those that really, the, both Mary and Joseph, that stands out when it comes to their role to play in the birth of Jesus. So with that being said, we're going to look at both Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 1 today. Um, not every single verse, or, or we'll be here forever, but uh, we're going to look at Matthew 1 and Luke 1 and a little bit of Luke 2 as well. So with that being said, let's go to Matthew chapter 1. Now to recall, Matthew 1 is the gospel of Matthew is really trying to portray the kingliness of Jesus. The fact that he is the king of kings. And they really and he really goes about this by uh, making connections between the Old Testament and the New Testament, especially through prophetic uh, sayings. Whereas Luke is really um, focused on showing the humanity of Jesus. Uh, the fact that he is 100% man, 100% God. Um, so with that being said, let's dive in. Matthew chapter 1, we're going to look at verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Um, now before we go into Joseph's response here, it's important to see how scandalous this is. Uh, betrothal is is most likely compared to um, our is most likely compared to our moment of engagement. However, there is more legal substance uh, to betrothal than there is to an engagement. Uh, well, with that, we can see where that scandal, the scandal can come up to. Uh, there's two, there's two angles to this. One, um, it, it was the it's the trial of another man, and so it's a cheating scandal. Uh, not only could that result in uh, shame, which it would, uh, it could result in exile. Uh, it could even result in death as well. Uh, it was taken very very seriously. Um, but the other hand, it could. Uh, be that Joseph uh, and Mary both had relations during their time of betrothal, and that also was looked upon very, very poorly. Uh, it would have been a scandal as well, uh, to the point where both of them could be looking at uh, being exiled from their community. Um, so with that being said, uh, he has this, he knows it's not his. And so the question is, is it somebody else's? Um, yes, but not in the way that he thinks. Verse 19, And her husband Joseph, being a just man, and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. And this is a great moment of faith for Joseph. Uh, he could very easily have just pushed her to the side, thrown her to the wolves, so to speak, thrown her under the bus. Uh, he very well could have done that, and nobody would bat an eye. Nobody would have blamed him for doing that. Uh, but instead, he does not want to put her to shame. He does not want her to... To, he does not want to see her exiled or killed, uh, and so he divorces her quietly. My guess is, or he's a, he's wanting, he's resolving to divorce her quietly. Uh, my guess is what that's hinting at uh, is that uh, one nobody else knows uh, about that decision except for Joseph. Um, but then, too, he's going to do that in a way where it gives Mary the option uh, to be remarried later on. Uh, I think that is what's at stake there, and that's what he's decided to do. 
until the Lord gets involved. Verse 20, But as Joseph considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins." All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. So, you have this great moment of faith with Joseph, uh, which again, I believe is the role, uh, the the thing that we could really take from the role of Mary and Joseph is their faith in all of this. For Joseph, here's his big point. Is he going to not just... Um, not just be a godly man and putting uh, Mary away, but now that he's heard about the godly, wonderful uh, purpose that is really in store, and he's heard that, no, it's it's the Son of God that is w within uh, your wife's womb. He has this moment, do I take this as true? Do I really take this as true? Um, and he decides, yes, it is true. And so he takes it as the truth. Uh, and he does as the Lord has commanded. Um, now, going forward to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, with Luke being a historian, he gives a lot more detail. Not that Matthew doesn't care about the detail, but he is wanting to show the kingliness of Jesus. And so he doesn't want to spend as much time uh, as uh, Luke does with the uh, with the birth of Jesus. It doesn't mean that the birth of Jesus didn't happen. It just means that each author is trying to portray, uh, portray Jesus in a very specific manner. So with that, Luke, uh, with his focus on trying to portray Jesus' humanity, wants to spend more time in how did the birth of Jesus come about. And that's what he does in Luke chapter 1. So, in the first part of Luke chapter 1, it's not just the miracle birth of Jesus, but it's the miracle birth of John the Baptist. And, uh, and we get that from verse 26. In the sixth month of Luke chapter one, in the sixth month of the in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Now, the sixth month it could be related to uh, the time frame. So, is it possible uh, that uh, this refers to the fact that the angel of Gabriel show, uh, shows up to Mary in the month of June? possibly, uh, but my guess, especially with verse 24 in the context, after these days his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she kept herself hidden, my guess is the sixth month here is being connected uh, to the conception of John the Baptist and uh, the pregnancy um, of uh, within Elizabeth. So that's my guess um, there. Um, but yeah, so we have the angel showing up. And here, the big difference is the the response of Mary to the angel Gabriel. Verse 27. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. Now, I want to make just crystal clear here. There is this theory called the Immaculate Conception. The Immaculate Conception is this idea of trying to explain how Jesus is perfect for the rest of his, for all of his life. Um, and the idea is that we have to kind of make Mary perfect uh, because of the sin nature of man. The problem is that so the, the idea with the Immaculate Conception is that Mary is perfect. Uh, she is 
sinless, uh, basically, from her birth all the way up to the birth of Jesus. The problem is that that is never mentioned in Scripture. Yes, she is mentioned as the favored one here in Luke uh 128. But it's just the fact that she is a faithful, godly person. That's what's being talked about here. It's not the fact that she's perfect. Uh, it's not the fact that she's never sinned. It is the fact that she loves the Lord. And as we see here, she is a very wonderful woman of faith. That, I think, is why she is described as the favored one, not because she is perfect in nature. Um, so we don't really see that anywhere in Scripture, uh, this idea of the Immaculate Conception uh, or the perfectness of Mary. Uh, why is Jesus perfect from beginning to the end of his time on earth? It's because he's the son of God. <laughs> that that is uh, that is just proof enough of how he's able to do that. Um, that's proof enough. <laughs> so with that being said, a little bit of a tangent, but it does uh, clear up a little bit as well. Verse twenty nine, though. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And this makes sense uh, because uh, after at the end of the Old Testament, hundreds of years passed with silence between the Lord and Israel and during the time of the intertestamental period until Luke chapter 1 when uh, the angel of the Lord shows up to Zechariah in the temple and lets him know about the birth of John the Baptist that is to come. And so, yeah, she has every right to be afraid, not just because it's an angel, which would probably freak me out too, uh, but it's because of this uh, just centuries of silence. And now all of a sudden the Lord is speaking and he's about to put this plan into place, yeah, I'd be freaked out too. <laughs> so with that being said, what is the plan? Verse 30, And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be, since I am a virgin? So, there's a couple of things here. Obviously, Mary has every right to ask this question, because, well, yeah, if that makes sense biologically. How is this going to happen? Uh, and the angel does tell her in a second. But the other thing that I want to point out here, too, is the connection to David. Now, there is this idea that Mary is connected to David as well. And that very well could be. But the idea that I want to put forth here is the adoption of Jesus by Joseph. Uh, and in most respects, people are going to connect Jesus as being the son of Joseph. Uh, in that day and age, there are no, uh, like, uh, what is it called? There are no, uh, um, yeah, there's no DNA samples. You can't do uh, parenting tests, whatever it's called. You can't do the DNA test where, okay, you are the father, you are uh, the mother. There is That technology is not there at that time. So everybody would suppose that uh, Jesus is the son of Joseph. Um, and again, I think what a beautiful moment this is to make the connection of the adoption of Jesus by Joseph, knowing that the whole entire mission of Jesus is to adopt you and I as uh, simple human beings to become his children, even though we have no right to be so. Uh, we do not deserve that, and yet he adopts us as his child. And so we see a glimpse of that here um, before he's even born. And I think what beautiful thing that is. Now, with Mary, um, is she correct to, to question the Lord here? Yeah, 
<laughs> Absolutely she is. Zechariah does the same thing in the first part of Luke chapter 1. But the difference, though, is how they respond once they are given an explanation to the question. Um, yes, Zechariah has questions, uh, but then he is given the explanation and he does not take them as truth. He's still questioning in his heart, so his question turns to doubt. Whereas Mary she questions this, is given a response, and goes, yes, absolutely. So let's look at that. Verses 35 through 38. Uh, and the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was also, uh, who, sorry, with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now, Again, yeah, the reason why she responds in this way is not because she's a perfect human being. It's, it is because she is a godly woman of faith. That's why. That, that's a, that is why. Um, she responds in immediate uh, acceptance, even though it makes no sense biologically and is this impossibility. But yet, I think that's why the angel brings up the conception of Elizabeth. It's like, look, yes, this seems impossible when it comes to uh, just a normal birth, but yet... Elizabeth, who has no biological way of giving birth to a child at her age, being barren, uh, even she is giving birth to a son. And so therefore, why would this be impossible for the Lord to do on your end? And she's like, you know what? That makes sense to me. I accept that. And it's not this, um, and I do want to make this, uh, this point here. There's this theory that uh, this was a non-consensual act on the Lord. The difference, the problem with that theory, though, is that there is no sexual relationship here. It is not like the Greek gods of old um, that sometimes do show up as uh, human beings and can have uh, relations with with people, um, as we see in Greek mythology. Uh, it's not like that at all. The Lord does not have a sexual relationship uh, with Mary. He just in this miraculous moment uh, causes the womb of Mary to conceive to conceive and give birth to a son. Now I wish I knew how that worked. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but um in that moment, it is just this miraculous, miraculous moment. And, and the idea, too, of this being non-consensual, that's not true either. Mary knows exactly what's going to happen, uh, why it's going to happen, and she... Yes, she had a question about it at first, but why, once it was explained to her, she said, look, I accept this as being truth. Uh, so I think that this is uh, completely consensual. It is this amazing moment of history uh, and a, a great example of the faith of Mary. She could have said, look, this is crazy. I'm not doing this uh, or I'm not believing in this at all. It's crazy. But no, she believes in it uh, and trusts that the Lord will do exactly as he's promised. And he does. Now, with that being said, on your own time, Check out Luke chapter 1, verses 46 through uh, 56. This, there is this incredible song by Mary about everything that is happening, uh, not just her conception, but Elizabeth's conception as well. Um, now, go to Luke chapter 2. Uh, we're going to look a little bit at it, uh, verses 1 through uh, 7. And in those days, the decree went out went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. 
and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn, which then leads into the shepherds and the angels. So, again, what is the lesson here with Mary and Joseph and their part to play in the birth of Jesus? Simply put, it is all faith. What a great example of faith these two are. With Joseph, it is being a godly man of character, seeking to put Mary on a path of of restoration, not knowing what is going on. But then once he does find out from the angel what is going on, he believes every single word of it, and he takes Mary as his wife and becomes the adopted father of Jesus. Uh, whereas with the adopted human father, uh, whereas with the... Gospel Luke, he really focuses on um, the the side of Mary. And with Mary, uh, the faith is just completely on display there. Um, she is seen as favored because of her character, um, her godly character and her faith. Um, when she is told about what is going to happen, yes, she has a question about it. But once it is explained to her, uh, she takes it as truth. She believes in every single word of it, uh, and it is credited to her as righteousness, I believe, going back to Genesis chapter 15 with Abraham, uh, or Abram at the time. But anyways, so with that being said, uh, I hope this encourages you as you go into uh, the time of Christmas. Now, with that being said, I will be with my family next week. Uh, so Tuesday and Thursday next week, we will be off. Uh, so I will not we will not have Robin Word on Tuesday and Thursday next week. I will see you in the new year, though, in 2024. Uh, but thanks for spending time with me today in the Robin Word. Thanks.